Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Keila Serene Oves, and I am the owner of Serene Spirit Healing and Retreat Center here in West Kelowna, British Columbia. Um, I've been asked to speak on a topic that I'm passionate about and share with you. And, um, you know, these are challenging times. We all know this. And I'm really passionate about finding ways to bring people together, to find a deeper connection in non-traditional ways that we're used to, and also to really take advantage of the ability to reflect on our current circumstances and to turn inward and find solutions using our own internal compass and our own wisdom. So I am a shamanic practitioner and an energy worker, um, which means that my focus really is on analyzing the energetic status of somebody's body and helping them work through traumatic blocks that have taken up residence energetically through unprocessed emotions. And by sorting through those and working through those with people, enabling them to live empowered on purpose lives. So I'm also really passionate about meditation, I should say as well. And so as a preemptive to this talk today, I want to let you know that I will be talking on how to live and sustain ease and grace despite the state of the world. And there are three keys in to do this today. So I'm gonna be sharing that with you. Also about half of the time today of our hour will be on this topic. And the other half will be guiding you through a meditation. So if you're just checking in later, you're looking at the recording, you don't wanna hear the talk or you don't have time, probably around the 20, 30 mark, we'll be starting the meditation. Feel free to scan forward to that. And um, if you're joining me now, welcome and get comfortable grab a cup of tea or a glass of water, um, somewhere comfortable to sit so that once the chat part of our discussion is over, then we can comfortably be guided in through the meditation. And hopefully you have, there's, there's no requirements to meditate. Even a little bit of noise is okay, but if you are able to be somewhere quiet, that would be really helpful for today's meditation as well. And hopefully it provides you with a little bit of solace and the experience of what it can feel like to just pause and have the luxury of feeling in tune with your body, taking a break from your day-to-day -day life and creating space in your life to celebrate you and to find ways to be more at peace and in flow, which leads us to into our conversation today. So um, as I mentioned, the outline for today is talking about the three keys to sustaining ease and grace despite a world of chaos around us. It's been coming up a lot lately, this topic, when I've been working with clients. Um, as time goes by, people are desperately trying to remain positive, keep loneliness at bay, <clears throat> and their motivation high. And I'm asked a lot about how to experience a life filled with more ease and grace. I think this is a really good question right now. And I think it's something that we all aspire to have regardless of our external circumstances. We all want to feel that we're in flow and that we are able to tend whatever comes up for us in life with ease and grace. The question is, how with the chaos surrounding us in what at times feels insurmountable ways, how can we continue to live our lives with grace and not be pulled direction after direction, um, out of alignment with our true selves and staying on purpose and path. So to me, living in flow, I mean, there's, there's many, I guess it's a very individual experience now that I'm thinking about it. But for me, living in flow is being able to respond rather than react to circumstances around us. So when we're in flow, we're able to ride the ups and downs and the currents of our lives without capsizing, so to speak when stress or catastrophe or any other human emotion overwhelms us, living in flow means being able to present enough to turn towards our pain, to be present enough to do so, rather than turning away from it. It does not mean avoiding challenging or painful experiences. It means having the courage to know what may be coming and choosing to turn towards it anyways. So there are so many different ways that people tend to personal challenges. I mean, some people are able to turn directly towards conflict and chaos. Some repress. Others maintain a heightened awareness of their emotional experiences, but they must shelf them and shelf tending the emotional currents until they have the supports around them to shift those energies. 
Others are unable to recognize that they are in the depths of a stressful circumstance. And they may be so disconnected from their bodies or have been so conditioned to self-sacrifice for the sake of family or career, etc., that they may ignore what their body may be trying to tell them in order to survive. Whatever category you fall into, it's important to recognize it without judgment. One day we happen to be like perfectly in flow and life feels easy, regardless of what may be happening around us. And the next, like we're a blubbering mess of grief and loneliness and we can barely walk the dog. I mean, do you know what? Both of these experiences are okay. Both of them are the human experience. Both versions are part of your choice to be here and embody this human experience. When you chose to take up residence in this body or this meat sack or whatever you want to call it, you also chose to experience the whole gamut of human experience. And this includes all the good, all the bad, and all the ugly. So when people ask me how to live with more ease and flow in their lives, what they're usually asking is how can they avoid painful experiences? Sometimes I think we believe that there are shortcuts to our human experience, but there must be some magical way to bypass all the pain and hurt. This becomes especially desired when we're surrounded with, say, our current pandemic. <laughs> Nothing more challenging than having to deal with the natural human stresses that come from daily life amidst the loneliness of pandemic restrictions. We're also in a really challenging political unrest with our neighbors to the south. This is palpable and it's permeating through the entire world. So these, these, these issues are not easy. They're complicated and in the best of times with our normal experiences of our lives, life is challenging. It has ups and downs. Adding on these extra layers of challenge with the pandemic, isolation, fear and projected fear, the inability sometimes to find the truth and what is actually happening or going on, the political climate, it's a lot. And so of course we are trying to find ways that feel easier to cope and to tend with the challenges that are coming up to us day to day. I completely understand this. So without community during this pandemic, humans are lost without love, touch, connection, humans can't thrive. We can survive, and we are, but we cannot thrive this way forever. So what do we do when faced with our current social, economical, and health situations? How do we stay in flow when it feels like everything else is just crumbling down around us? Well, I don't claim to have the perfect answer for this, but this has been my experience and how I've tended my own challenges during these challenging times. My opinion is that we begin by accepting where we are and no longer wishing we could be somewhere else or feel differently than we currently do. There are three keys to remaining grounded and in flow during trying times. They are as follows. The first one, be exactly where you are right now in this moment. Meaning, surrender to your current experience without trying to change it for now, this is step one. Step two, make no assumptions and take nothing personally. Meaning, we have no idea what may be happening behind the scenes in any circumstance, sometimes even in our own. Most things that we experience are projections of someone else's fear. It is rarely about us at all. So number two, make no assumptions, take nothing personally. It's not easy, so just hints. <laughs> challenging to work through all of these pieces. I understand that. And number three, learn to become comfortable with not knowing. Or in other words, let go of the need to be in control, to know what is coming next and the desire to force your experiences onto your own personal timeline. Foster patience, foster compassion and gentleness with yourself and with others. Trust yourself to know exactly what to do when the time comes. Have faith. So to dive a little bit more deeply into these and just to summarize them, number one, be exactly where you are in this moment. Number two, 
make no assumptions, take nothing personally. Easy, right? <laughs> it's not easy. Number three, learn to be comfortable as possible in the not knowing, in the discomfort of being blind in some respects. So when we talk about the first one, be exactly where you are right now. I guess what I mean by this is try to stop avoiding the discomfort of your current situation. We are conditioned to avoid pain and chase pleasure. To live a balanced life though and grow in our human experience, we must have the courage to feel the entire spectrum of human emotions. And that means the ones that bring us joy as well as the one that bring us pain. It's often not the pain itself that harms us but our, instead our conditioning and beliefs around what pain means. I approach surrendering to my current experience by becoming mindful of the labels that I use to define said experiences. So every day, this is kind of just what I do daily. I wake up, I go through a gratitude practice, and then I assess kind of where I'm at for the day. It's the start of the day. Okay, like where... Where am I at? How am I feeling? Depending on how I slept, my stress levels, anything else that's going on or maybe bringing me anxiety. I just kind of like tap in and I assess. Some days I wake up and I feel awesome. Other days I feel like I've been hit by a truck. <laughs> I know you can relate. I've learned that my day unfolds more organically and my resilience is better when I don't label my experiences or how I'm feeling or my emotions at that moment as good or bad. So the more I remain neutral, and I'll explain this a little bit further in a moment, the more I remain neutral, the more I get to choose to look at any and all experiences with a gentle curiosity. If I label something as bad, I instantly align with and call in a negative emotional response. Just like if I label something as good, when the situation changes and it becomes not as good or negative or just your circumstances change, then the label changes, the emotions change. So you're being constantly pulled and pulled depending on the label that you assign to your current emotional experience. So when I relinquish control, I let go of the resistance to seek some things and avoid others. When I'm pulled and pushed through my life with the labels that I assign, it's nearly impossible to remain open-hearted and see the wisdom behind your experiences. And when I say wisdom behind your experiences, I mean the lessons that are available for us to learn through our hardship. So I encourage you to try to experience all situations just as they are, as human experiences. So it's hard to not see tragedy as something terribly negative. That, that's, that's realistic. And honoring the power of that is important in order to help us process our emotions. It's hard to look at a stunning sunset. If you're from Kelowna, you've seen them as of late. They've been pretty amazing and not allow it to bring you joy. So I'm not telling you to neutralize your human experiences. I'm telling you to be mindful or encouraging you to be mindful about the way that you label things as good or bad, when perhaps they can be viewed as neutral instead. And in that neutrality, your awareness opens and your awareness shifts. In the neutral space, you can respond rather than react. Responding with a gentle curiosity about what is the meaning perhaps behind this? How could I look at the situation differently? How can I use this experience, whether good or bad, to work for me in some capacity or to become a kind of wisdom that I can then use to be in service to others. That's what I mean by remaining neutral with labeling or being too quick to label something as good or bad. Every one of us has a different perspective and a different lens on what defines something as good or bad because we have opinions and personal tastes. So when you remove the innate wanting to pull an emotional opinion out right away, and you remove that, there's a lot more flow to be open to deeper meaning in your life when you come across especially challenging circumstances. So allow your experiences to just be that, just be experiences. 
And as you transition from one experience during your day or week or month into another, you will find a flow that is not controlled by your emotions because we are not our emotions. We have emotions and our emotions are often roadmaps to higher awareness and opportunities for growth. They are not, however, real, even though they feel it. So our labeling is just another type of emotional awareness. And we want to try to remain outside of a container of expectation. We want to try to be growing and expanding in our awareness and deepening in meaning. And we can't further our understanding when we are bound by our labels. So that's number one. Um, Number two was make no assumptions and take nothing personally. Now, I've been working on this for decades <laughs> and it is a constant challenge because it's really hard not to take things personally. And the reason why, and I don't know if I mentioned it before that I'm so passionate about meditation is because meditation for me has provided me the foundation to create the space both mentally and spiritually in my life to perceive things differently. When you have space and you grant yourself time just for you to focus and process on thoughts and emotions, feeling into your body, connecting with your breath, giving yourself time to calm your anxieties or to process things that may have happened to you, then it's a lot easier to be or remain more often in a space where you don't have to take things personally. It's not a perfect process, but meditation can really foster the space required to think and perceive from a higher perspective, at least in my experience. So I had said it earlier, there's no way to know what is happening behind the scenes in life or in other circumstances other than our own. And even sometimes in our own, it's always in hindsight 2020 when we reflect and we're like, ah, that makes sense why I went through that or why I came across this person or made this choice, etc. But there's no way to know what's happening for other people in their lives. And we wear masks. We don't want to bother people. We won't want to impose our pain upon other people. And so we put the mask on and we smile and we hope that we're not a burden. So we don't know if the rude person in line at the grocery store ahead of us has just lost a loved one or is dealing with crippling anxiety or fear. The person who struggles to wear a mask for COVID safety may have panic attacks that are exacerbated by the sensation of their mouth being covered. It's a real thing. It's really difficult for some people. We cannot read minds, right? And our egos will tell us that something that someone does to us or reacts to us in some way is somehow a projection of our own behavior. My experience is that this is honestly rarely the case. Often when a situation arises, we are caught in the crossfire of a projection of fear. It is absolutely nothing to do with us. And if we don't take things personally, we can save the mental anguish and apply the resolve to deeper understanding of ourselves. It's like saving our energy and being really choosy on how we spend it. We don't have a lot of control over anything in our lives, despite what we may convince ourselves. But what we do have control of is our choices. And that comes down to, we get to choose how to respond to any situation. It takes practice and it's not as easy as just deciding, okay, today I'm not going to be affected by X, Y, and Z. That's crazy. That's not possible. Of course we're affected. But with practice, and for me, through the vehicle of medica meditation, medication, that was a little Freudian slip, <laughs> through meditation, which can be like medication, to be totally honest, we're able to, to just ride the waves and to have a deeper understanding of ourselves and to get that space that is required. So if we don't take things personally, we can save the mental anguish. And after all, I love this quote, what anyone thinks of us is really none of our business. That's their right to think what they wish, and we don't have control over it anyway, so it's not worth stressing about. Now, not an easy practice, but if you're interested in learning how to have deeper resilience and not 
take things as personally when things happen to you or to perhaps not be as affected by some of the pain in the world, there are ways to do that. And there are many methods of meditation and I encourage you to try to find your own way. If you've tried before and it hasn't worked, that doesn't mean necessarily that meditation is not for you. Perhaps you're the kind of person that really feels grounded and connected and like clears their mind when they're out in nature. Well, that is a type of meditation. It's an act of meditation and it's really transformational and powerful. So there's a million types. There's breath work, there's mantra work, there's transcendental, there's guided. You can use binaural beats. I mean, there's hundreds of traditional Buddhist type meditations. If you're starting to meditate or you're an avid meditator, or you're interested in finding a way that specifically works for you in the way that your brain works, reach out, reach out to me. If you're also interested in learning uh, meditation and you'd like a challenge, I have a 21 day meditation challenge, which I ran last year in fall. I guess it was in, I think, November and it was 2020. So it was 20 days, 20 minutes for $20 and it's 2021. So this one is 21 minutes per day. 21 days, three weeks for $21. And it's a really great way to be introduced to a meditation practice because I'll go through um, a number, a plethora of styles. Some will work for you and some won't, but it gives you a really good feel of what it's like to create a sacred practice, to create time and space for you every day where you are putting yourself first so that you can learn to connect and listen and manage your life with a little bit more ease and grace. It's just an offering for you. So, so far, we've talked about these three keys of sustaining flow and living with ease and grace in chaotic times. The first one was be exactly where you are without trying to get somewhere else or experience something differently. The second one is make no assumptions and take nothing personally. And the third one is learning to be comfortable with not knowing. I think this is one of the most challenging ones. I have an athletic background. I was um, on the world team for figure skating. And so as an athlete, you are taught that you get out what you put in. It's kind of a North American mentality as well. And that you push beyond what you think you need to do, that the person that pushes the most and works the hardest will become the most successful. And I've learned that in personal development work and in spiritual work and my realm of work, that approach does not work. There are moments where that approach works because we have to set goals and achieve them and activate them. But for the most part, more is not necessarily better. So learning to be comfortable with not knowing means being able to trust enough that if you don't see the exact path or answers for you laid out in front of you, that you still trust yourself and your own wisdom to be able to make the right decision when it's needed. So our ego's job is to keep us safe, to stay safe, we're conditioned to plan, organize, execute each and every step of the way, and to always know what is coming so we can respond effectively if something goes wrong. So it's a very, um, almost like preventative measure in case we need to regain control and things go sideways. And I personally feel like this is a trick. So we can never know what may happen in any outcome because we don't have control, not 100%. We can plan as best we can. But there has to be a point in time where you surrender to the process, you surrender to the wisdom and recognize that even though you may be leading whatever path or goals that you're trying to achieve, you are not the only one involved. There are higher powers, there are other people, pieces have to fall into place and it requires a really profound letting go and trust. The ideal human state is to be balanced in both masculine and feminine attributes. So masculine and feminine aspects of self reside in all of us, in each of us, whether we're male or female, we have both aspects of self. So the masculine is typically represented by attributes such as organization, being in control, having a logical mind, thinking through things, um, taking action, execution, and like ambition or drive. Those are very masculine. There's lots more, but those are like the foundational uh, masculine traits. Feminine traits include things like surrendering, 
trusting, uh, gentleness, forgiveness, stillness, um, creativity and sensitivity. Those are feminine aspects of self. So the aim is to ebb and flow between both states of masculine and feminine, depending on which traits serve us best in each situation. The only way we can figure out what is required in every situation is to know thyself, to be able to understand where our strengths and weaknesses are, and to have created, in my opinion, to have created space in our lives that we're not, and created lives that we're not trying to constantly get away from. Space to think, space to connect with yourself and your deep inner knowing. When you do that, you can see more clearly of perhaps which traits are active that are not enhancing your personal experience or your career goals or your family goals or relationship goals, whatever they are. If we are constantly absorbed in busyness and racing around and reacting to every situation, we cannot hear that really centering part of ourselves that is all knowing or very wise. We can't hear it. And I always reflect back, that's what meditation has really granted me, the ability to have stillness, pause, and to hear. So with respect to learning to be comfortable in the unknowing and the masculine feminine attributes that each one of us holds. So we were talking about having these traits ebb and flow depending on what's required in the circumstance that you're dealing with at the time. If we can't function or maintain calm in the face of uncertainty, we cannot be malleable in our responses either. So the longer we're able to sit in the discomfort of not knowing, just that like, there's almost an anxiety that comes with it at first. Um, you can't control the situation. Um, that's stressful. But if you can surrender and bring up those feminine attributes, you start to live with more ease and grace because there's, a, there's an, an element of trust and faith. So the longer we're able to sit in the discomfort of not knowing the future, our next steps, someone's response to us, the duration of the pandemic, how to bridle our fears, the easier it is for us to let go of the need to control and to go with the flow of whatever comes up from moment to moment. So finally, and you, you know, I was thinking maybe this should have been a fourth key or a fourth step to staying in flow and grace, but I won't make it as a fourth key, but it is a really important part to me um, and a part of this whole process that we've been talking about today in, in finding ways to live with grace and ease and flow. So this is in, <clears throat> in your attempts perhaps to adopt some of these philosophies or some of these keys, please, <laughs> please make friends with imperfection. Okay, try to see the beauty in the imperfection of it. And under the guise of failure, there is no failure, by the way, but under the guise of what may seem as a failure, seek the wisdom in the imperfection of that, that life experience. You and your family and our friends and this global community that we are part of we do not need to put any more pressure on ourselves. It's exactly the opposite. This pandemic has given us the opportunity to be still, to pause and to reevaluate what has meaning in our life. It has come with it many challenges, many new situations arising that are really difficult, but it also grants us the opportunity to do things differently. And for that, I'm really grateful. We don't need rigidity, perfection, or mastery right now. Those are all masculine traits. And what the world needs is a softness and a gentleness and a remembrance of how to be kind and loving to ourselves first and then subsequently to others. Your life is yours to choose how you live it. You are a sovereign being, and that is a really powerful part of this human experience. Your life's yours, but the true beauty comes from the imperfection of your choices. Because in reflection, we get to see the wisdom of the life that was created from the choices we made 
and the things that we learned. Choose flow, grace, and compassion for yourself and others. Use these keys to help you create this kind of an awareness in your life. Choose patience over instant gratification. Remember that good things do come to those who wait. And the intention behind the process in creating flow and being comfortable just in the moment of what you're experiencing takes practice, but it's not impossible. I know you can do it. I've done it myself. I've walked people through the process for years. It can change and transform your entire life and give you supports that you never knew you needed. We underestimate how truly powerful and capable we are. We really do. Trust the process of your life. Have faith in yourself. If we just step back and take a deep breath, take a deep breath with me right now. Deep breath. If we just step back and take a deep breath and surrender to what comes our way, we can truly live a life in flow with grace and harmony, regardless of what life throws our way. So on that note, um, I would like to lead you through a meditation. We're about the halfway mark, which is perfect. The meditation will be at least 20 minutes, if not 25, and we'll exit out of the meditation into um, Brish, bring you back into awareness. And I will recap the keys now for you before we begin the meditation. I'll also just recap and connect them when you're feeling, hopefully, when you're feeling calm and collected after our meditation. So that even gives more clarity in which ones, if any, or all of them align with you and align with your spirit. And you feel just a little call of some of them that might be ready to activate in your life. So after the meditation, I'll bring them up one more time for you just to summarize. So I invite you to take a moment if you need to stretch get up, move around, quick bathroom break. Just give maybe one minute and then I'll get you to settle in, uh, get comfortable. You can either sit with your feet on the floor in a couch. You can lay down if you like. Sometimes I recommend if you're feeling tired, don't lay down because you might fall asleep. Um, and that being said, if you feel like laying down and you fall asleep, you probably need the nap, so do it. <laughs> I fully support that. But if you wanna stay present with the meditation as best you can and you're feeling up for it, then try to stay seated. Support your back if you need to. If you have any body pain, make sure you're in a comfortable position. And I'll give you about 30 more seconds and then we'll begin. Okay. All right, everybody. Okay. <clears throat> so we're just going to begin with, you know, the first key actually, which is just being where you are in this moment. So just allow yourself to Begin to deepen in your breath. Get into a comfortable position. Wiggle around if you need to. Stretch your neck. Move your body. And begin to start to take some really beautiful deep breaths. Just notice, allow your awareness to travel anywhere it feels pulled in your body. And just notice on your out breath, allowing your shoulders to settle deeper into your spine. Inviting your breath to slow. With each in-breath, you just pause for just a minute moment at the top and then slowly exhale, ensuring that you completely empty your lungs. You allow your tummy to relax. So just following your breath and just with a gentle curiosity, 
if you notice tightness, just turn towards that tightness. Send your awareness to it. Tell your body that you're listening. And just pay attention to any tightness you may be carrying. And continue to breathe until you feel that tightness begin to dissolve. And if it doesn't dissolve, that's okay as well. It's just your body trying to tell you something. Maybe something that you can address later in the day or another day when you have time to sit again in silence. I'm just going to do just a mini body scan. So bring your awareness to about six inches above the top of your head. Just imagine bringing your awareness down to the top of your head until you feel between the brows, sort of the center of the forehead and just allowing the eyebrows to soften. And then drawing your awareness down and allowing your eyelids to soften your cheeks to soften and the jaw just to slacken. Give a little bit of space between your upper and lower teeth. Taking a couple of moments to become aware of the sensation of oxygen entering and exiting your nostrils as you breathe. Noticing fine details, like the difference in temperature on the in-breath versus the out-breath. It's a really beautiful way to connect you to your breath and to pull your spirit into your body. If you suffer trauma or you have had post-traumatic stress disorder or are dealing with chronic pain or anxiety or panic, this is one way to regulate your nervous system and to remind your body and your spirit that it's safe to be in this body and it's safe to be on this planet, which is not always how we feel. So traveling your awareness down through the sides, back and front of your neck. Just noticing any tension in your shoulders and just allowing your out breath to soften that tension, allowing your shoulders to be dropped down even further on the out breath with gravity. And as your awareness is passing through these areas of your body, you are becoming feeling heavier in those areas that your awareness passes through. Dropping down the spinal column now through those upper C spine vertebrae down into the heart center. And just settling in the center of your, your chest where you may feel your heart center sits. Becoming aware of the back of the body in the heart center as well as the front. and allowing your in-breath to expand the space in that heart area. And just allow a gentle opening, invite your body to open, to be a little vulnerable. And just noting how that feels without any intention to shift it or change it. If you feel open and free, really acknowledging that. If you feel tight or restricted, also acknowledging that and allowing the breath and your awareness to soften that area of your body. Allow the in-breath to open up the back of the heart. Feel as though the in-breath pulls in the air from in front of your body and the environment immediately in front of you pulls the air through the in-breath, through the heart center at the front. And on the out-breath, passes it through and out the back of the heart. So you're creating this beautiful opening cycle of breath. Breathing into the front of the heart space and opening. 
and breathing out through the back of the heart space and exiting. Just allow a few breaths to cycle here. You are able while in the heart space, breathing in the breath through your nose and breathing out the breath through your mouth. A couple more breaths. If your mind is wandering, that's okay. Call your attention back to the sensation of the air entering and exiting your nose. Be gentle with yourself. Any thoughts about what may be coming up in your day or may have already happened today, just shelf them as best you can. Regain your focus and commitment to yourself in this moment. And moving your awareness now down the shoulders and arms, and just imagining a flow or an energy moving through the arms and out the palms of the hand. You can breathe in through that heart space as we just practiced and breathe out the length of the arms and out the palms of the hands. And continuing to move your breath and your awareness down to your solar plexus. So right in your diaphragm area. And just taking note as you breathe regularly, if you feel any tension as you take in air and oxygen on the in-breath, and then just gently releasing it without forcing the breath out, just allowing the breath to exit the body naturally. And also just taking a moment to assess on your next full cycle of breath, whether the in-breath is shorter than the out-breath or the out-breath is shorter than the in-breath. Our breath can tell us so much about how we are relating to the world. And often if our in-breath is shorter than our out-breath, we tend to take in energy or receive things in more of a challenging way than we do in giving of ourselves to others. So if you give easily or if you overgive, then your out-breath will flow more gently and more with more ease and will be more have more length. If it is more challenging for you to receive, the in-breath will be more tight and restrictive. So the goal is to use our breath to process our breath and balance out the in and the out of our breathing, to balance out our ability to both receive and express love, energy, etc. So just another couple breaths Focusing your awareness on your diaphragm. Practicing slowing the quality of your breath to find a balance between the in and out breath. Feeling your rib cage fully expand as it houses all of those organs in your abdomen. Allow the lungs to push the ribs out and make a connection with that process of breathing. And traveling even further now to the sacral area of the body, which is right below the belly button or the navel. This area of our body is really activated through creativity and connection. And so often at this time right now, 
with the state of the world, this area of our body is a little bit more shut down. And rightfully so. It's hard to connect when we're not allowed to have distance or we must have distance between one another. So allowing your breath to reach this lower belly area of your body. Imagining now that you're breathing from that lower intestine area, that, that area right immediately below your belly button. Allow the in-breath to push that area out as though a balloon inflating. And then the exhalation, just allowing the air to deflate naturally. If you carry back pain in this lower sacroiliac part of your back and those joints starting to enter into the area of your tailbone, these areas are often energetically linked to abundance or career or challenges with those areas. They're also linked to feeling unsupported or unstable or with people in your life or circumstances. And they are directly also related to fear. So a lot of people are having challenges with back pain. So just allowing your breath to bring your awareness if you are one that struggles with lower back pain, recognizing it's just a message from your body, using your breath to tell your body that you are, you're listening, that you're present here right now with it. This area of the body is also linked to our passion and our joy, the sacral area. If you feel tightness here or an inability to connect using your breath in this meditation to this area of the sacral part of the body, it may be asking you to question or reflect upon what is bringing you joy. Do you have enough of it or do you need to seek and create more joy in your life? And then traveling down the back of the spinal column once more into the tailbone area. So this is really the very root. It starts in the sacral, our fear, but it sits in the root of our body. So does our stability and how we feel safe. Our family relationships, whether they were healthy or unhealthy is built here in childhood. Allowing yourself just to bring your awareness to this part of your body, down that tailbone area, that root cord of our energy system begins and extends from the tailbone. And if you're a visual person, you may be able to imagine like a rooting cord or a plant root system extending out of the tailbone area of your body and just traveling down beneath the seat of where you're sitting. If you can't feel it, it's okay. Your intention is just to connect with this real visceral part of your physical body. And if you're able to, continuing to allow this root system to connect from the tailbone down past your physical body or your auric field, your energetic system that all physical beings hold. And you're just imagining these tree roots growing down and starting to connect whatever way feels right for you, traveling down through the floor of the building you are in, perhaps through multiple uh, layers and levels of the building but eventually reaching the ground, the earth, and really connecting into the planet. Just as the planet has an energetic field as a living entity from a shamanic perspective, so do our bodies. And the connection is what allows us to feel at home and belonging here on this planet. When we deal with chaos and crisis, 
it is harder for humans to connect to the planet because it feels unsafe. And so we tuck up this core. And so a common practice that I encourage people to do is just practice sending your energy down, sending out a cord, reminding yourself that you're safe. You're safe to be in your body. You're safe to be on this planet. It may not feel true or ring true for you, but with work, you can calm the nervous system to allow a deeper connection. So remaining aware of your breath as you send this cord down. And then noticing if there's any areas of your body that may have tightened back up and just using your breath and to bring awareness into those areas and softening them again. Checking your shoulders, your tummy, You just imagine traveling with a little, like a little beam of light up and down your spinal column. This vertebrae by vertebrae. It doesn't have to be quick. Just traveling up the spine from the tailbone, through the vertebrae, through the nervous system, up through the center of the brain, passing through that corpus callosum that holds between the hemispheres and then up through the top of your head and then repeat the reverse process. Bring that little beam of light down the top of your head through the hemispheres of your brain, down your nervous system, through your spinal cord and the vertebrae, down through the tailbone, and out of your energetic field. So just drawing the energy from the core up through the top of the head, and from the top of the head through the spinal column, down through the tailbone, out of your body. Just allow your breath in this visualization for a few more cycles of breath. You may find it easier on the in-breath to travel from the tailbone up and on the out-breath to travel from the top of your head down the body and out the tailbone. Whatever works for you is the right way. And then bringing your awareness now back into your heart center. Allow yourself once again to feel your breath inside your body. This movement that creates your life from second to second that pumps your heart, responds to your organs and your thoughts, moves your blood. Becoming aware now of your environment again, keeping your eyes closed and starting to tap into any other sounds around you, the sensation of either the chair or the floor beneath you. Beginning to slowly move your fingers and toes, maybe rolling your shoulders. And then when you're ready, coming back to us and opening your eyes. Okay, well, welcome back. It's perfect timing. So as you kind of get your bearings, continue to move your body. If you have moments throughout your day, you can reimagine any part of that meditation that may have felt good to you, even if it's a sensation of air exiting or entering your nostrils to help center you, especially if you're feeling tension or anxiety or you have something stressful you know you're going to be having to deal with it's a really great way to stay in your body and clear your mind to center yourself any aspect of what worked for this meditation today you can use again you don't need to be guided anything that aligned with you please use it as a tool and if you are not a visual person and you found this challenging i have so many other ways and techniques to calm your mind to enable you to have quiet and stillness mentally. So if this wasn't your cup of tea, 
it doesn't represent the whole gamut of meditation experience. There's other ways. And so reach out. I'm happy to find one that works for you and reach out in any other way. If anything that I've spoken to you about today was of interest and you're interested in learning more, um, I have some beautiful programs coming up that I'd love you to take a look at. You can find them on my website. Probably Shauna will post them, but it's www.serenespirit.com and Serene is my middle name spelled S-E-R-E-E-N serenespirit.com so I'm going to just quickly review with a couple of minutes that we have left um, some of the things that we spoke about today I just want to see if it's in here please hold I've closed my little notes and I want to make sure that I am clear with it Please hold. Here we go. Okay, so we talked today about three keys of maintaining ease, flow, and grace in chaotic times. So the first one was be here now. I think that's a Ram Das quote, and now I really get it actually. And my wording was be exactly where you are right in this moment and don't try to escape anywhere else as best you can. This means to surrender to your current experience and allow yourself to experience it, knowing that you're safe to do so. It may be uncomfortable, but you're safe to do so and you can handle the discomfort. The second one is make no assumptions and take nothing personally. It's a challenging one, but I think that it's possible with practice. And when you create space and time in your life to practice these things, Life just seems to get easier. It doesn't change, but our ability to respond becomes a bit more gentle. So the third one, learning to be comfortable in the not knowing. And that's the feminine aspect of ourselves. And when we're in survival mode, all of those masculine attributes come up. The needing to plan and organize and feeling in control, they make us feel safe but they also restrict joy and ease and grace because we put ourselves in containers of expectation. So doing the best you can to stay comfortable with not knowing or learning to be comfortable with not knowing. And then I had that fourth one, which wasn't a point, but applies to all three, which is become friends with imperfection. The beauty of life is found in what we learn from our mistakes. And there really are no mistakes. It's all just about our human experience. So be mindful about your labeling. Experience all facets of human experience to the best that you can. And the next time you may feel yourself wanting to label an experience a certain way, just pause and see if you can refrain. And how does that change your perspective? So best of luck with all of this. Um, I have so much gratitude for those of you that have shared time with me today. And Shauna, I have so much gratitude for you and your invitation to be here today. So on that note, it is 11.59 and I will sign off. I look forward to hearing from any of you that would like to make a deeper connection and are looking for guidance or path or purpose. And we are all in this together. So wishing you compassion for yourself and gentleness with both yourself and those that you love. Um, this will end, we're going to be okay. And uh, I'm sending you all so much love. So thank you very much.